when when we talk about humility i think the first thing that comes to my mind is a verse in shikshashtakam trinada pishu nichena taroro pisahishnu na right you should be humbler than a blade of grass more tolerant than a tree uh, you know devoid of all false prestige and always ready to give respect to others so i had a question regarding this especially i am in the i, I work in the corporate space so if if this is taken literally and i am always humble then there is a risk of being trampled upon by others right and uh, also i just wanted to understand whether this uh, these four uh, instructions which this verse talks about being humbler than a blade of grass tolerant than a tree uh, not expecting any respect and ready to give all respect to others are these compartmentalized within themselves or is there an overlap and connection between them or is humility an umbrella a quality which uh, encompasses all of the other three so if uh, prabhu ji could shed light on that yeah that's a big question uh, thank you for asking it so two things with respect to humility in general any virtue you know, which we hear about in scripture or even in, in tradition at large there is our conception of what that virtue means and there is the traditions depiction of that virtue in action so we all come with particular conception like humility means that we will be as you said trampled over that's our conception and now if we look in the tradition the has that happened to those who are humble yes at one level we could say that sometimes we for example haridas thakur was beaten and he did not retaliate but that itself is not given as a example of humility that is given more as an example of forgiveness now we do see that chaitanya mahaprabhu exhibited humility in his dealings with uh, the impersonalist that he enco- encountered that with <clears throat> with sarvabhoum bhattacharya he referred to him as a venerable elder like his father with prakashanand saraswati chaitanya mahaprabhu sat at a lower place while all the advaitik sanyasis were sitting at a higher place and they themselves uh, invited him to come and sit with them so he did exhibit that humility in the sense of uh, a culture of respectfulness but at the same time when it came to philosophy he did not in the name of humility accept philosophical view points that were contrary to the conclusion of the scriptures in fact he quite strongly opposed them so in my understanding humility is more about personal conduct not so much about so humility is reflected in our personal conduct but humility doesn't mean that we undermine the purpose that we are meant to serve the service that we are going to do so if we have a responsibility and if that responsibility requires us to be assertive in certain areas we don't hesitate to do that so 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 that means there are two distinct things one is in personal conduct while dealing with others we if we we are respectful that is indicative of humility but so you but humility doesn't mean that uh, we become like a like a twig in a storm and get let ourselves get swept away or become like a dish rag which is used and abused and discarded by people so humility means to not let our ego come in the way of our purpose so we have a certain purpose and ideally if we are practicing a spiritual life then we have a higher purpose of serving krishna and whether we do a particular service or not doesn't depend on whether we are respected or disrespected it depends on how we can move forward 
and if somebody is opposing or obstructing a particular service then we may have to do the needful to continue that service and if that involves uh, sometimes challenging the other person that is that is what is required so we can say that humility is more a matter of uh, more, as i said earlier a matter of personal conduct it's not a matter of uh, purposeless or spinelessness and uh, beyond that with respect to the four uh, elements of humility i would say this is a matter of analysis what is the way in which they interrelate humbler than a blade of grass more tolerant than a tree uh, to respect others and not expecting respect for oneself so these are now how do we analyze them i would say depending on the the f- frame that a particular person might take we could say that truna the piece uni chain this is just one way of looking at it i'll say that in different ways that humbler than a blade of grass that is a example for uh, for uh, for basically for humility and then as i said tolerance like a tree now that is is an example for a tolerance as it literally said now what what i mean by this is that although we say the verse is about humility the verse itself talks about two things humility and tolerance and the next part is about respect so respect is you could say about how we give respect and how we seek respect so we could say these are all four distinct things if you want to go that way but we can also say that these are referring to one virtue so if we want to be humbler than a blade of grass now how do we do that so we could say that humility is manifested through the other three things that we tolerate Mm-hmm. and a tree ha- is said to have a, a, a enduring as well as a giving nature enduring means not lasting but tolerating or not being a, not being reactive and as well as giving a tree gives shelter a tree gives fruits like that so so humility is ex- could be said to be exhibited through tolerance it is also exhibited through one's being re- not seeking respect for oneself and one's giving respect to others that's one way of looking we could say all four are distinct and we could say the first is illustrated in the next three the next another way of looking at it could be that that humility and tolerance uh, ultimately how do we know that somebody is humble these are not uh, isolated virtues these are behavioral virtues that we know humility and tolerance only when a person is subjected to particular situations where others where normal reaction might be not so humble or so tolerant so if that is the case then we can say that amani that not expecting respect from others is an evidence of humility and tolerance means that i offer respect to others in respect of how they behave with me that means the other my behavior is not necessarily a one to one response reaction to their behavior of course we consider other person's behavior but that doesn't mean that alone determines so if somebody insults me that doesn't mean i have to necessarily insult them that can vary from person to person but the idea is we see them as human beings who are parts of god and at that level we offer them respect specifically this is depending on how they are behaving we may respond appropriately but there is a basic level of respectfulness so i think these are these are these are analyzable in different ways the key thing is that when we are trying to develop virtues that are internal and abstract all that we can have are pointers towards that so we could say broadly speaking that these four are pointers towards humility that by doing things like this we can we can progress toward humility but that doesn't mean that these are these are inclusive of all the ways to be humble nor does this mean that these are 
that just by doing these we will be humble sometimes humility can take different forms so sometimes one might have humbly be assertive so we would say that that <clears throat> the last part of this verse in my understanding that is the key kirtaniya sada hari that our heart should be able to be free to glorify krishna so na that means the per humility we are not seeing it here as a, a virtue that is to be pursued as a end in itself humility is meant to take us to the end of uh, a constant glorification of krishna so constant glorification doesn't simply mean we are dancing and uh, singing but that our life and our energies are released are not fettered so so that we can glorify krishna and although sometimes we consider that certain people externally may be obstructing us from the glorification of krishna more often than not it is our own inner inner attitudes or inner emotions or inner reactions to others that distract us from glorifying krishna so if we keep that purpose of kirtaniya sada hari in mind and so that is the direct that is the direction in which we want to go now if we see a mountain okay you want to climb up that mountain you want to reach that mountain now if it's a forested path i can see okay there is a there is a small path this way there is a small path this way there is a small path this way so like that these four are are possible pathways are toward that direction of constant glorification of krishna so whichever now whichever pathway works for us that's what we can use is answer your question yes definitely thank you thank you bro